Warning. The following reading contains subject matter that some listeners might find disturbing or difficult to hear. Listener discretion is advised. of a pan clattering against the kitchen floor echoed through the quiet sweet shop called Sugar Cube Corner. The accidental drop was loud enough to wake the young cake twins, who jolted upright in their beds. Living in a bakery, they knew that awful loud clang rather well, but weren't used to hearing it at that time of night. They contemplated remaining in bed rather than run the risk of being caught snooping. But curiosity won out, so the pair quietly scampered down the main staircase towards the kitchen. Unsurprisingly to the twins, when they peeked around the corner of the kitchen doorway, they found a frazzled-looking Pinkie Pie. She was trying some kind of new balancing act the Cake Twins hadn't seen before. A bag of piping was in Pinkie's mouth, which she was using to ice something onto a cake. While simultaneously grasping a saucepan in her left hoof, a cupcake tray in her right hoof, and attempting to open the oven door with her back hoof. This left only one back hoof on solid ground to maintain her equilibrium. Although the sight would have been amusing to most, the cake twins exchanged worried glances rather than amusement. Pinkie Pie? Pound Cake said, boldly interrupting whatever it was he was witnessing, while his sister followed close at his hooves. Oh, Pinky, I didn't like you, did I? Pinky said, the words garbled by the piping bag in her mouth. When the cake twins could only offer a face of confusion in response, <laughs> she giggled and spit out the bag onto the counter, while sliding the cupcakes into the oven and setting a timer. Pinky exclaimed, picking up the piping bag in her hooves and resuming her icing endeavor. Why are you baking? Luna's moon is still high in the sky. Pumpkin observed, pointing out the kitchen window to the bright moon shining overhead. Well... Pinky started, then switched tasks yet again by sprinkling flour on the counter while finishing an icing swirl. Even her normal pinky absurdities were multitasking as a rolling pin produced itself from her mane. I've got extra crazy lots to do before the big party tomorrow! Everyone in Equestria is going to be there and they're going to be hungry! I still have six dozen cupcakes, seven pecan pies, twelve caramel fritters, and another triple chocolate cookie cake with chocolate frosting and chocolate sprinkles! You know those Camelot ponies! They love their chocolate! Initially, the twins didn't respond, unsure how to answer such a string of absurdities. Eventually, they chose to offer their assistance rather than try to riddle out Pinky's logic. Want us to help? Aw, you silly Billy Billy should be snoozing in dreamland, not rolling out pie crusts and setting the caramel on the stove to soften. Pinky said, doing those exact actions as she spoke them. Pinky Pie? What in Equestria? Pinky and the twins' attention snapped to the matron of the family, Mrs. Cake, when she joined them in the kitchen. 
She rubbed the sleep from her eyes in disbelief at the sugary array stacked before her. Hiya, Mrs. Cake! Pinky exclaimed with an energy and volume that was unwelcomed at this hour. Mrs. Cake recoiled at the sound as Mr. Cake finally made his appearance, completing the house's inhabitants. Just finishing up those desserts for the big party? The castle ran out of sugar, can you believe it? So I thought I would finish up here. I knew you all wouldn't mind. Sorry about all the noise. I can be a tad clumsy when I'm quadruple tasking. Oh, I can't wait to try all these tomorrow. I might just have to make a caramel chocolate cherry surprise pie just for me. I'm so hungry I could eat a dozen cupcakes all on my own. Pinky dearest, don't you think you could bake some of these things tomorrow after you've gotten a good night's rest? Uh, yeah. You've made plenty of desserts so far. I'm sure a couple cupcakes won't be missed. Mr. Cake said, echoing the sentiment while nervously rubbing the back of his neck. Uh, sometimes it's easy to lose track of time when you don't give yourself a break. <laughs> Pinky laughed just as loudly as ever while she slammed the pie dough on the counter and started to flatten it with the roller. Don't you worry! Twilight's included sleepy time on that big list she gave me of things to do! As soon as I'm done with the baking, I'll get right on that list. And it's up to Betty Pie for this pink poop party prepping pony. Pinky said dismissively, unable to pull away from her tasks, even for a moment, to make eye contact. Maybe we should get your friends over here to help you in the morning then. We wouldn't want a pooped pink party throwing Pinkie Pie. Isn't that right, dear? Mrs. Cake sharply elbowed Mr. Cake as she gently nudged the twins towards the stairs. They looked back at Pinky one final time, their brows furrowed in worry, before giving in to their mother's silent command. Yes, uh, your friends and maybe your eccentric sister can come by. She'll know how to help. Mr. Cake said nervously, watching his family ascend the steps to their respective rooms. Sounds absolutely positively perfect! Perfect to me! Pinky said, still not meeting his eye. Well, uh, good night, Pinkie Pie. I, uh, I hope you get some rest. Mr. Cake remarked with a sigh uh. before he too climbed back towards the comfort of bed. Pinky hadn't noticed if the cake's behavior and comments had been anything outside the ordinary. She knew they worried when she worked so late into the night. But this celebration was the most important party of the year, and she couldn't afford a single slip-up. If even one pony left that party with a frown, she had failed. It would be a failure of Ponyvale being able to heal. It would be a failure that would reflect poorly on Twilight, and that would mean more hardships for a friend she loved so dearly. But most importantly of all, it would be a failure to her very nature. Pinky took those dark looming thoughts and buried them beneath her sheer determination to keep moving forward. She had just started cutting the third pie crust from the flattened dough when the timer on the oven dinged. The party pony delightedly dropped the knife on the counter to grasp an oven mitt in her mouth. It was her favorite part of baking opening the oven to the initial wave of warmth on her cheeks and the sweet smells of perfectly golden pastries that followed. There was a comfort in that familiar aromatic embrace, a comfort that her frazzled nerves and growing anxiety needed now more than ever. Before her outstretched hoof could reach the handle of the oven door, however, Pinky thought she heard more hoofsteps approaching. Her delight rapidly melted into annoyance. What had she done this time? She was sure she hadn't made any additional noises to wake the cakes. Were they coming back to lecture her again? How long could she continually reassure them that she was okay before the happy facade would break? I see nothing's changed around here. Pinky froze for a moment. She could have sworn that was Applejack's voice coming from behind her. 
She giggled and shook her head. Okay, maybe I do need some sleep. Now I'm hearing voices. Pinky thought absently to herself. Oven mitt still clasped tightly in her teeth. She refocused on the task at hoof, and the oven door swung open with ease. A pang of disappointment twinged in Pinky when the initial warmth and smell did nothing to ease the tightness in her chest. That any way to greet an old friend, Pinkie Pie? I'd have thought better of you if I didn't already know what a phony you were. Pinkie Pie had never heard voices in her head this clearly before, and the grim curiosity caused her to spin around with the cupcake tray still in mouth. When she stopped, she could barely believe her own eyes. There, standing at the counter with Pinky's empty pie tins and baking supplies, was Applejack. <coughs> Pinky screamed out and flung the cupcakes into the air, stumbling backwards onto the stove and narrowly grazing the hot saucepan with her right hoof. The cupcakes went soaring, splattering around the kitchen while the hot tin came whirling back down onto Pinky's back right hoof. She screamed again, but more in shock than in pain, kicking the hot pan away as quickly as possible before letting her eyes focus onto the mare before her. Her eyes weren't playing tricks. This wasn't a dream or a cruel prank. This intruder was undoubtedly Applejack, but she wasn't quite the Applejack Pinky remembered. This Applejack looked haggard, like a sun-bleached, worn-out piece of leather. Her fur was matted and unkept, along with her mane and tail, like a pony who hadn't had a proper bath in years. Pinky couldn't see her eyes from underneath that old, tattered hat, but she could see the hateful grimace, and that's what had startled her the most. Applejack wasn't exactly alone either, as she leaned against an old, dirt-encrusted shovel and was wearing a belt with various old gardening tools. Pinky immediately recognized them as the very kind that had once been used as AJ's instruments of torture. Applejack? Pinky said, her voice squeaking more than usual. Applejack! Pinky flung herself forward, her hooves outstretched like she was welcoming back a friend from an extended vacation. It was all Pinky could think to do, knowing that her brain would need time to catch up with itself. Despite the innocence of the gesture, Applejack didn't give her the satisfaction. She didn't she want didn't Pinky want believing, believing, even for a moment, that there was anything good left between them. She shoved Pinky away, hard and the pony fell against the sink, her head snapping back and forth so violently it gave her a headache. Uh-uh. You don't get to touch me like you give a damn. But, E.G. Pinky trailed off. She had a million thoughts buzzing around in her head, competing for a chance to form into words. So many things left unsaid, and so many questions. It only made her head throb harder. Don't you but AJ me. Applejack snapped back, taking her hoof and setting it behind one of the empty pie tins before rocketing it off the counter. Pinky jumped and gasped out when the tin hit the adjacent wall. The ringing soon took hold in her ears and wouldn't relent. An unsettling feeling of dread was growing steadily in the back of her mind. Twilight made sense. She had to keep up that perfect little image of hers. And I wouldn't expect Dash to give a shit. And Fluttershy will do whatever the hell the rest of y'all tell her to do. Rarity's another fucking story. But you, Pinky, what's your grand excuse? Applejack ground, violently flinging another pie tin across the room. Pinky asked, voice shaking as she helplessly covered her ears from the increasingly loud timbre of ringing. For abandoning me! Applejack screamed, taking the shovel in her hooves and knocking every last item 
ingredient, and pastry from the counter. Among the disarray, a bag of flour collided into the kitchen window, mere inches from Pinkie Pie's head, and she had to bite back the urge to sneeze when its contents billowed around her. like that. Some friend you are. AJ's words stung like a thousand bees all attacking Pinky's heart at once. She had often wondered if it was truly Applejack who had sent back her countless letters, all unopened and unread. Deep, deep down in the pit of Pinky's stomach, she'd always known it was a lie. I... I shouldn't have given up. Pinky admitted, strands of shame gripping around her heart like a vice. She hung her head, unable to bite back her tears. There was a brief uncomfortable silence between them while Pinky succumbed to her soft sobs. They were interrupted by the wind whistle of Applejack's shovel whirling past Pinky's head to land mere inches away, stuck into the wall beside her. She jumped gaping at the shovel that could very well have implanted itself into her skull. A Applejack? I'm not really feeling very merciful tonight, Pinkie Pie. Lots changed since you knew me. And some things, well, I just can't forgive. Applejack abruptly jolted towards Pinkie like a mad mare, hooves outstretched for the party pony's neck. <coughs> Pinkie didn't even have a chance to scream. She could only squeak in fear and duck out of AJ's way. She scrambled, crawling towards the stove as Applejack pried the shovel from the wall. Come here! Pinky could hear the orange mare's gallop, her rapid heartbeats in sync with AJ's thunderous hooves. Pinky jumped up from the floor and grabbed onto the only thing she could reach, the saucepan of caramel that had been melting on the burner. With an outcry of effort, she flung the pot and its contents in AJ's direction. Oh God! AJ let out a scream of pain and anger, the garbled sounds of her guttural shriek mixing with the ringing in Pinky's ears. The caramel contents spilled out onto the floor as the saucepan clattered to the ground beside the pair of mares. At first, Pinky couldn't believe a pony could take a red-hot pan to the face and still remain standing. But with grim realization, she remembered Twilight mentioning an aversion to pain as a side effect from that accursed sleepless potion. You're... but... they said they cured you! Pinky stammered. She was backing herself into a corner while the former farmer stalked ever nearer. You knew they were fucking lying. You knew that I never got any of those goddamn letters, but you still gave up. You gave up on me. Pinky knew that if she didn't act fast, she would surely meet her gruesome end. She gathered what courage and stamina she had left and charged into the mare, <laughs> slamming her head into AJ's chest and forcing her backwards until she hit the countertop. Pinky didn't take the momentary victory for granted. She extended her hooves to gather as many pastries and cupcakes as she could reasonably hold from the carnage on the floor. They would be her arsenal of weaponry. Taking one muffin in hoof, she desperately flung it in Applejack's direction, following it up without hesitation with the remaining treats one by one. Pinky knew her chances of survival and escape would increase drastically if she chose to throw something heavier or sharper, but she couldn't fully comprehend those consequences. Objects like that could maim, dismember, or kill. Not Applejack. 
she couldn't do that to Applejack. She'd already failed her. She couldn't keep failing her. The other mare didn't need to contemplate the severity of such a situation. As Applejack unsheathed the spade from her tool belt and hurled it towards Pinky, Pinky dodged again, only running on adrenaline now. As she looked for a way out, she saw the back door was a few gallops within reach. But what about the cakes? If her baking woke them before, what was to stop them from hearing this potential massacre? She knew she needed to get to the stairs and block Applejack from reaching them. Pinky veered to the side, choosing to run around the kitchen, hoping to confuse Applejack. She made one mistake, though. Pinky forgot the sticky caramel was now soaking into the wooden floorboards near the discarded saucepan. Although it wasn't enough to keep her stuck in place, it was plenty effective in tripping her. <coughs> Pinky fell forward, grasping the kitchen curtains as a fruitless effort to soften her fall and snapping them out of place. She collided hard with the unforgiving floor, brain rattling in her head. A few seconds passed before Pinky felt an incredible force yank her up by the mane and press her face towards the still-lit burner. Pinky gritted her teeth and pushed back against the hoof that was trying relentlessly to incinerate her. She felt the heat singe the bits of fur on her cheek, but she refused to give up. In a moment of frightened insanity, Pinky pushed her own face against the burner to shock Applejack enough to remove her hoof. It worked, and the pink pony pulled away from the heat as quickly as she was able. She didn't want to assess the damage. She just needed to get away. Maybe it was the final straw having to burn herself just to flee. Or maybe it was the thought of the innocent cakes in danger. But either way, Pinky found herself with much stronger conviction. If she didn't kill Applejack, Applejack would kill her. She was a failure, but she wanted to be a live one. Pinky reached for some of the knives resting in the block on the counter near the sink. She screamed out, thrusting one at a time at the orange mare. She couldn't be sure, but Applejack seemed to move faster than any pony ought to be able. Not a single knife was successful in its endeavor. Even more frightening was the sight of AJ picking up the discarded knives, like she was calmly collecting a deck of cards. Pinky's hoof eventually found nothing but air, and she quickly glanced to the side to see that the knives had all been thrown. In desperation, she grabbed the block of wood they had been resting in and threw that at Applejack while sprinting away from the kitchen. Pinky's hooves beat against the ground fervently until she spotted two of the very ponies she was trying to protect. Mr. and Mrs. Cake were indeed coming downstairs at the horrendous noise, but their timing was deadly. As Pinkie Pie retreated, Applejack had decided to try her luck at knife throwing, and her aim was far superior to the frightened party ponies. Pinkie collided into the pair of cakes. She tumbled roughly to the ground at their hooves. Screeching, buzzing, and drumming bees whizzed around in Pinky's head as a headache exploded from a sudden impact. Their angry noises mixed with the ever-present ringing in her ears. It was so encompassing that it deafened the world around her. Pinky only knew that she was gasping for air because of the violent expansion and contraction of her chest and the burning in her lungs. Louder and louder the chaos grew, and not even shaky hooves pressing her ears into her skull could stop its ascension. When Pinky finally opened her eyes to look up, she saw Mrs. Cake's face. The odd expression struck a chord in Pinky. It was unnerving. The pastry shop matron was pale, wide-eyed, and shaking. She was looking down, though not at the pink pony at her hooves. Pinky's gaze followed hers until it fell upon the blade protruding from her friend's chest. Pinky opened her mouth to scream, but wasn't sure if anything came out. 
from where Pinky laid. It seemed as if Mrs. Cake was playing a macabre game of freeze tag. She didn't move. Her chest didn't expand for breath, and her fixed expression didn't change. Then, all at once, Mrs. Cake crumbled to the ground. Pinky didn't even see the blood until Mr. Cake frantically pried the blade from Mrs. Cake's chest, spraying Pinky's face with his love's viscera. Pinky knew it in her gut now. Applejack had won. There was no escaping this gruesome end. Pinky awkwardly scrambled backwards, wincing from droplets of blood in her eyes, clouding her vision. The sight before her was too much to bear, so she turned back towards the kitchen to face down her demise head on. Instead of finding a murderous mare, however, Pinky met the smiling face of what she could only describe as a demon, its figure a glow. It took a few seconds for her to realize that the glow wasn't from an otherworldly sight, but the beginning wisps of flames on cupboards and counters. Fire had broken out in the kitchen, and Pinky spied the fallen curtain resting and burning on the open stove top. This was her fault, abandoning AJ, leaving her loved ones in danger, starting the fire in her carelessness. All of it. Pinky was ready to give up the fight and curl into herself in anguish. But just as she was about to squeeze her eyes shut and await her demise, Pinky caught sight of the twins. Somewhere in the confusion, they must have joined every pony downstairs, only to find their mother's lifeless corpse. Their little cheeks were marred with tears as they tried uselessly to shake her back to life. Pinky didn't know what strength she had left, but her hooves responded. She sprang up from the ground and screamed above the roar of the blaze at Mr. Cake. It was odd to feel the words in her throat, but be unable to hear them. The fire and the damage it was causing had taken the place of the ringing and humming, but it was still too loud to be heard over. Pinky grabbed Mr. Cake's hooves that were still clutched tightly to the body of his wife. He shirked her away from him angrily, but she kept trying to drag him up. Pinky could see the flames in her peripheral vision. They were seconds from consuming them all. It was then that she realized that she could no longer see Applejack, but assumed that she had fled once the flames overtook the kitchen. It was a small mercy to be able to help her loved ones without the crazed mare simultaneously trying to kill them. As Pinky struggled to get a response from Mr. Cake, she grew to realize she couldn't waste more time on a pony that didn't want to be saved. No, she had the twins to think about now. Pound was the closest, and her hooves wrapped around his little waist, prying him from his mother. He thrashed wildly, beating his hooves against Pinkie Pie, and even bit down hard on her foreleg. She couldn't afford to release him though, and silently withstood his frenzied resistance. Pinky and Pound were the closest to the back door and the encroaching blaze had not yet overtaken it. She bolted towards their freedom until shaky, sweaty hooves were forced to fumble with a lock. Pound's thrashing was only making things more difficult, but Pinky clasped him tighter to her chest. Finally, the door handle moved, and a rush of fresh air entered the kitchen as the door swung open wildly. The gust of wind it created picked up the powder of flour scattered about the kitchen, and the flames immediately took hold. A resounding explosion followed after Pinky's getaway, sending her and Pound flying into the street behind the bakery. Pound finally had leverage over Pinky, kicking her away from him as he bolted free from her grasp. Luckily, the foal was wise enough to run away from the fire, rather than attempt any futile effort to save those within. Pinky didn't have the strength or mental capacity to follow after him. All she could do now was lay in the street 
and stare. Sugar Cube Corner was completely alight, burning away all that she loved. Tears stung the burn on her cheek as she helplessly watched the fire's destructive glow. She kept her eyes locked, transfixed, on the orange mare standing in the window of the bakery's kitchen. Applejack hadn't fled at all. She remained to watch the fallout. Flames were licking the sides of her fur, but she did not burn. The unholy <laughs> demon was immune. <laughs> The sound of a very hungry bear's bull colliding with the floor, repeatedly, was grating on Fluttershy's last nerve. However, he was not the only protester in the little cottage on the outskirts of Ponyville. More than a dozen of Fluttershy's animal friends were squeaking, shrieking, screaming, and roaring defiantly to be fed. She knew her animals would have been hungry after she had dedicated all of her time to helping her friends. But they were far more unforgiving than she would have thought. Uh, all right, all right. Fluttershy said in exasperation as she headed towards the cupboard in the kitchen where she kept nuts and berries. She held a small brass key in her hoof and placed it into the lock on the cupboard, turning it to the side to allow her access. She hated the idea of locking food from her animal friends, but what else could she do? Angel and some of the other forest creatures would often attempt to raid her stash of food and gorge themselves until they were sick, leaving nothing behind for any creature else. I've fed you three times already since I've come home. I don't know why you're all acting like you're starving to death. The animals didn't respond, snatching the portions of food she'd pulled out of the cupboard before she could even lower her hooves. <sighs> Fluttershy sighed in a mixture of annoyance and relief, seeing her ravenous animals quiet at last as they satiated their hunger. She knew that they were all very capable of hunting and gathering food for themselves, but they refused. She wondered, regretfully, if they had relied on her for too long and lost the ability to do so. She turned back to the cupboard, locked it, then made her retreat from the overcrowded kitchen. Fluttershy's hooves felt heavier than she remembered them being. She poured over the day's events in her head, wondering how it could have dampened her spirits so significantly. She knew Rarity had an issue with perfectionism, yet her constant requests for slight changes had whittled down Fluttershy's resolve. Twilight certainly didn't help with her long list of tasks, which only a small fraction Fluttershy would deem important. She, she found, found herself with a pang of bitterness, too, at Rainbow Dash's sudden appearance at the end of the evening. Fluttershy had worked so hard for so long just to have Rainbow casually show up and decorate twice as much in ten minutes than she had in five hours. If only she could stand up to Rarity. If only she could rationalize with Twilight's demands. If only she could turn away Pinky's stomach-churning desserts. If only she could avoid the waves of guilt and pain she felt seeing that ice sculpture of Applejack. If only... Fluttershy's thoughts were far more negatively charged than she would have liked, and it gave her pause. I think I'm just exhausted. Fluttershy muttered out loud to herself, dragging those tired and near useless hooves towards her bedroom. However, before she could take a single step inside the door frame, Fluttershy's ears swiveled around to an unfamiliar sound. Slow, drawn out hoof steps. She wasn't sure why, but the sound instantly filled her with fear. Fluttershy snapped her head to look behind her, but found nothing. 
Fluttershy shook her head and pressed her forehoof to her temple. She massaged the skin to try and calm herself, but found little relief. She went to move again, and the hoofsteps returned, louder this time. She was sure she hadn't made it up in her delusion, so Fluttershy briskly walked back down the hallway towards her living room. Hello? She called out, hoping no pony would answer. What you been doing to them animals, Fluttershy? I ain't never seen a more frenzied pack of wild vermin. Fluttershy's fears roared to the forefront of her mind when she came face to face with the only mare who had ever broken her spirit and faith in pony kind. Though her face was obscured, the familiar orange hue, apple cutie mark, worn Stetson, and gathered blonde mane and tail were unmistakable. Nevertheless, she didn't linger too long on Applejack's overall appearance, but looked instead to the sharpened blade atop the thick shaft held firmly in her grasp. It only dawned on her when she saw the stains of old dirt that this was once a shovel. Now, though, it resembled much more of a weapon. <coughs> Fluttershy's wings flared, and she soared to the ceiling of her living room to put as much distance between her and Applejack as possible. You never were one to mince words, were you? How did you... <laughs> where did you come from? That's not the right question to ask, Fluttershy. Applejack said, calmly wiping the end of the shovel with a handkerchief, like a chef cleaning a knife before carving into meat. What? What you should be asking is what I'm gonna do while I'm here. Applejack added, tilting her head towards the ceiling and locking eyes with Fluttershy for the first time. Fluttershy's pupils shrank in horror when she saw the eerie, unholy red glow of AJ's irises. It was so prominent. A crimson illumination tinted the rest of her face, making her smile all the more terrifying. What happened to you? Fluttershy screamed, pressing herself into the farthest corner of the ceiling, praying that AJ wouldn't make a move in her direction. Oh, I've got all kinds of new tricks. Wanna see? Fluttershy didn't reply. She could tell by Applejack's intonation that whatever she would have shown her would have been a terrifying sight. Instead, Fluttershy darted from the room to the kitchen. She knew better than to waste time trying to appeal to some pony who was obviously gripped by terrible dark magic. Fluttershy's first priority was the same one she'd had most of her life, saving the animals. She was almost surprised to find them all busily chomping their third dinner, despite the unwelcomed visitor only a room away. Go! Go, little friends! Get out of here! Fluttershy screamed, gesturing her hooves wildly while checking over her shoulder for Applejack. Only some of the animals looked up at Fluttershy when she shouted at them, and even the ones that did eventually turned a cold cheek to resume feeding. Fluttershy didn't have time to calmly explain why it was so dangerous for them to stay in her cottage. She had to act fast and efficiently. She scooped up a pair of chipmunks and flew to the window, gently tossing them onto a tree branch outside. They rolled into each other in confusion before getting up and shaking their fists angrily. Fluttershy was getting an earful of their squeaky objections. Run! Now! Fluttershy hollered back at them before scooping up the next group of critters and pushing them out the doggy door. She moved faster than she had ever moved before, determined to save them from some unknown fate. Harry the bear was the last one she had to move, and he was far too large to move on her own. Despite her pleas and desperation, he refused to budge. With no other options, Fluttershy sucked in a breath and bore her stare down upon him with no mercy. 
Harry stared blankly, slack-jawed, before scrambling to leave the kitchen through the door, where many of her other animals were attempting to sneak back in. Unfortunately for them, they were steamrolled by a retreating bear instead. Fluttershy immediately slammed and locked the door. She pressed her body against it and squeezed her eyes shut in fear. There you go again, putting the lives of pests and vermin above pony folk. Guess it was too much to ask to keep faith with your friends, when it's them animals you really give a damn about. Applejack said, walking slowly and calmly towards the kitchen. The shovel in her grasp was dragging across the wooden floorboards. And the scrape of metal felt like it was carving into the inside of her skull. Fluttershy ventured a look at the mare again, and the red glow seemed to only brighten the longer she stared. Eventually, Applejack stood between Fluttershy and her way out. The Pegasus knew she, she was, was trapped. trapped. She closed her eyes again, silently vowing that she wouldn't dare look a third time into those deep, horrifying red irises. And again, you're swayed one way or the other by any pony with an opinion, ain't you? I don't even know if there's a single thought in that empty head of yours that is truly your own. You know who takes orders and does what they're told without question? Critters. That's all you are, huh? An oversized, dumb critter. Fluttershy's eyes brimmed with tears. She'd been called many horrible things over the years. But this one especially hurt. Did other ponies see her this way? How exactly was she different from just another blindly loyal pet? Fluttershy's careening thoughts were interrupted when the animals on the other side of the door slammed themselves into it defiantly. They were screaming, chirping, chittering, and demanding to be let back in. How was she going to convey what was happening? Was her in any danger? All Applejack had done was bite her. But those eyes... Those glowing, ungodly orbs... Fluttershy was sure they could only mean... Danger! She braced herself against the door as best as she was able, withstanding the repeated blows from her misguided animal friends. Want to know the thing about critters, Fluttershy? Fluttershy's eyes were still squeezed as tightly shut as she could get them, but she could tell that Applejack was getting closer. Still, she didn't respond. What would have been the point? If some pony wanted to frighten, berate, or debase her, there was little she could do to stop it. Fluttershy could hear the shovel scraping closer and closer as her whimpers swallowed her screams. When the sound stopped, Fluttershy held her breath, willing her body to come to a complete standstill, as if it could somehow shield her from what was to come. She felt the hot breath of air on her snout, and she could smell a horrendous unknown stench that followed. The shovel moved again, this time... It sounded like it was being held aloft, in a voice no louder than a whisper. Fluttershy heard the words, It ain't a crime to kill a critter. <coughs> Fluttershy's eyes snapped open and she screamed, darting away from the shovel poised above her. She wanted to make a break for the front door, but she caught sight of Angel Bunny in the corner of her eye. She gasped, and lunged towards him fearfully, the pair tumbling across the kitchen to land under the table and against the wall. It knocked the wind out of Fluttershy, keeping her disoriented and slumped to the floor. Once she'd taken a few deep breaths, she twisted her body to the side, just as a soft whirring zipped past her ears. Before she could see what it was, she heard the thud of Angel Bunny next to her. No! Fluttershy screamed, seeing that the weaponized shovel had effortlessly sliced through her beloved pet's flesh. Splaying him out before her. 
She turned away immediately, puking violently on the floor amidst a cascade of tears. Her sobs were loud, but they didn't completely drown out the sound of Applejack simply and stoically, opening the door to the animals waiting outside. The sound of the handle clicking and the old hinges squeaking was enough to snap Fluttershy out of her grief. She sucked in a frightened gasp. Her animals. She had to save them, so she clambered her way out out from from under the the table table in a frenzy. Fluttershy was so convinced that Applejack was going on an animal killing spree that what she actually saw momentarily stunned her into place. Applejack wasn't attacking the animals at all. Her hoof was gingerly cupped to Harry's ear and she whispered something Fluttershy couldn't catch from her distance away. Fluttershy didn't understand what she was seeing. Harry was calmly staring straight ahead with a glint of recognition and understanding in his eyes. Her breath caught in her throat when AJ's gaze moved to lock on hers. Even so, Applejack didn't stop whispering to Harry, but this wasn't logical. It just didn't make sense. Applejack couldn't speak to animals. Unless that glow, it is dark magic. Fluttershy's gaze detached from ages long enough to see Harry's new pair of glowing red eyes. Something deep inside Fluttershy was awoken the second she beheld his new unnerving and evil illuminated face. It was like an erupting volcano, red hot anger that had been kept dormant for too long finally unleashed. A few dark whispers from Applejack was all it took. Mere words and her animals could be swayed. Just like Fluttershy when her friends told her to feel one way or another, they just succumbed. Pushovers, all of them. Useless, mindless animals with no real capacity to make their own decisions or to come to their own conclusions. The pieces were slowly falling into place. Applejack wasn't going to get her own hooves dirty. She had something far darker in mind for the Pegasus and her demise. Fluttershy took one final look at Angel's mangled, soulless body then let out a guttural scream that could have shaken the cottage's foundation with its magnitude. Harry roared defiantly back at Fluttershy as the pair raced towards each other. Fluttershy's mind was in a frenzy. No clear thoughts could penetrate the anger radiating from the tips of her wings to the base of her hooves. She had always been grossly underestimated when it came to speed, agility, and strength. She used that to her advantage now, as she zipped around Harry, landing blows to his torso and head as he swung wildly at her. His claws were bared, and he was able to get a good swipe at Fluttershy's left flank in the struggle. She screamed out in pain, glancing to see the damage, and only finding a dark representation of how she felt. He'd sliced into her cutie mark marring it with blood. It was soon soaked through and visible from the spreading crimson. Animals don't have cutie marks anyways. Oh, come on! (laughs) Animals kill animals all the time! (laughs) Survival of the fittest, Fluttershy! (laughs) Other animals started to enter the fray, their glowing red eyes unforgiving as they bore down on the mare they had once viewed as a saint and a mother. A final pang in Fluttershy's heart echoed through her chest at the sight of her animals turning on her as they did. But these weren't her animals anymore. Applejack had seen to that. Fluttershy couldn't comprehend how she had the capacity to meet each of their blows with one of her own. Her thoughts. Her feelings. Her pain, all pushed out of mind for the will to live. 
even through the screeching of birds, screams from the forest critters, and roars from Harry, Fluttersh I could hear Applejack's whispers. More and more of her friends were turning on her, intent to kill. Fluttershy kicked and swatted the smaller creatures away from her. As she focused on Harry, his attacks were the most volatile after all. Applejack's laughter grew more thunderous and reverberated with each animal Fluttershy had to fight away. Finally, Fluttershy wrapped her hooves around Harry's neck and pulled hard. The sickening snap was jarring enough for the other attacking animals to silence themselves temporarily. Harry made a soft grunt, like a last gust of wind leaving his lungs, as he collapsed hard onto the ground. Reality was slow to set in, creeping up inside Fluttershy with each swift heartbeat. She had done the unthinkable. The remaining animals looked upon her with the same fear she had shown Applejack minutes earlier. Fluttershy saw reflected in their glowing eyes a tiny glimmer of their old selves, stuck in shock. It was Applejack's voice coming from behind her that finally broke the silence. It was not to Fluttershy that she spoke, but to the animals she had corrupted. Finish her. The words, sickly sweet and sinister, erased any hope Fluttershy had to leave her cottage without more death by her hooves. She gave in to her outpouring of rage, induced by heartache, as the sweet cottage on the hill turned into a house of horrors. <laughs> <laughs>